Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutun. You're watching Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Two years ago, more than 180 countries, including Malaysia, agreed to ban hard-to-recycle plastic waste trade in an attempt to stop countries dumping trash in the developing world, where it often ends up polluting the local community and environment. Now, the new restrictions come under the UN Basel Con Convention, which came into force in January. Signatory countries can now only trade plastic waste if it meets certain criteria, that it is clean, e um, sorted and easy to recycle. Last weekend, two containers of plastic waste were shipped from the U.S. and arrived at Port Klang, according to the Environment Minister, Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man. These containers contained only clean polyethylene commercial plastic waste and therefore complies with the Basel Convention. But does compliance with the UN Treaty justify a resumption of this business? We speak now to Rajiv Rishikarian, former Special Officer to your being, the former Minister of Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change. He's also the Adun for uh, Bukit Gassing. Rajiv, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now, the PN government, the Perikatan National Government, uh, reversed what was seen to be a, a, a Pakatan-era policy to ban plastic waste imports. Now, you worked with Yobi in the Mestak Minister during this time. What was the thinking regarding plastic waste imports? Hi, uh, good evening. Thank you for having me on the show. Hi, everyone out there. One, one of the big problems with plastic waste is the recycling of plastic waste. Now, we all want plastics to be recycled, but not every kind of plastic waste is easy to recycle. So we've got homogeneous clean plastic normally arising out of industrial production. You know, in factories, cut plastic to make products. Uh, these are somewhat easy to recycle. And then we've got a lot of contaminated plastic. So you know your drink packets and whatnot, uh, filled with food waste and drink waste. Uh, this may be harder to recycle. So certain plastics uh, mixed match with other products, making it very difficult to recycle or contaminated with food and drink or other contaminants, making it very hard to recycle. So a lot of first world countries, European countries, have been exporting uh, recycled I mean, they recycle collection. You know, they collect the recycling uh, trash from houses on separate days and they export this out to other countries to process. So they chalk up very good statistics in plastic recycling and overall waste recycling. But when these plastics reach Malaysia or reach Thailand or Indonesia, it's hard to recycle and it's often then burned or disposed of and it harms the environment in Malaysia. So we want to stop that. We don't want the contaminated plastics to come into Malaysia and these fly-by-night companies that import these plastics in, they subsequently burn this trash because it is not of any recyclable value. But we want to bring in good recyclable material. So uh, clean plastics, homogeneous plastics that can be recycled, I think that's good for the local economy to go on. So that was the Pakatan policy. Uh, we did issue APs for importing clean plastics. We were very strict. Have you seen Yobin going down to the port many times? to inspect containers alongside the DOE. Our DOE during our watch was very strict to ensure that containers of plastic waste coming into the country met the criteria of clean uh, plastic that can be processed. That right, can be Rajiv, to can I so interject? So what you're saying essentially is that this is, in some sense, a continuance of a Pakaran Harapan policy. Yes, it, yes. Is a continuance. So, it is a continuance. Right, so can I just ask you, though, Considering the ecosystem that exists within Malaysia in terms of recycling, we know of you know, literally hundreds of factories devoted recycling that are not documented, illegal in fact. Uh, uh, the, is there still a problem? Even if it's clean waste coming in, can we ensure mm -hmm. that the highest standards are being used in dealing All with right. that waste? Okay, so even during our time, there were companies, uh, factories that had been licensed to bring in this plastic waste. Now, factories can comply to DOE strict standards and do it without causing harm to the environment. The problem is we have these hundreds of fly-by-night factories that you talked about. Uh, these are factories which have no DOE approval, no local council approval. They set up shop without following environmental standards. They contaminate the rivers around them. They contaminate the air around them. And these factories must be shut down. So DOE must be strict with these factories, just like DOE must be strict with the containers that come in. Because right. DOE has the power 
to inspect the containers that come into Malaysia to ensure that these containers are uh, clean plastics and they are going to the right factories which are already licensed by DOE. Do we know, do we know that, Rajiv? Yeah. Do we know if that all shipments into Malaysia of plastic waste are being inspected to ensure that they're actually clean plastics and not contaminated plastics? So this must be done by DOE. So we, right now, since we are out of government, I do not know that the level of uh, scrutiny that is being applied. But during our time in power, yes, we applied a very high level of scrutiny. We deployed manpower and resources into checking that the containers that come in are clean plastics. And we were actually bold enough, uh, and we got international recognition, for turning away containers of dirty plastics contaminated plastic. Mm. Rajiv, I, I think there might be still some disquiet about why the government is willing to do this. I mean, China in 2018, you know, banned a whole range of uh, waste products and decided it didn't want to get involved in this particular kind of industry. And there is a thinking mm -hmm. that the countries that produce waste ought to deal with their own waste. If, yeah. Why have we decided that this is something that we want to get involved in? I think we I think when we talk about this we are often referring to domestic waste. You know, your your recycling waste that the trash compactors collect in front of your house. Now we don't want these waste coming into Malaysia. We don't want these waste from Belgium and Germany and Poland and and UK to come into Malaysia. So that that should stop. And that was something that we pushed for, uh enforcing uh the containers that are coming in. Plus, uh during Pakatan's time in power, we were part of pushing for the amendments to the Basel Convention to stop the free movement of such waste. Now, it is deemed a hazardous waste, and the country that is receiving it needs to approve it. It cannot be a company-to-company -company transaction without the approval of the, 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 the receiving country. So we are quite serious about this when we were in power, that we want to stop this waste from coming in. Uh, Germany must deal with their waste, uh, Poland, Belgium, and so on. Uh, they should deal with their waste. We don't want them coming in. Uh, but... You know, we also have an industry that is this, that is dealing with clean plastics, and I think uh, that's a separate matter. And, and, and around the world, uh, this this is happening. It's a competitive industry. It's raw materials in, in another sense. All right, Rajiv. Right, so that distinction should be should be kept in mind. Uh, we don't want the, to kill the economy totally, but. We are doing what we do to protect the economy, to protect the environment okay. at the same time. All right, Rajiv, thank you so much for speaking with us and providing us um, the, some insights into the matter. Appreciate your time. Now, pollution from illegal plastic recycling factories is not an abstract issue. It has a direct impact on local communities. Heavy metals pollution of uh, the Langat River in Slangor has been traced to such factories in the town of Jinjarum. According to media reports, there are about 30 plastic recycling factories in Jinjarum dealing with some 17,000 tonnes of plastic waste. Greenpeace Malaysia has been monitoring the situation there. Heng Kia Chun from the organisation joins us on the line now. Uh, Kia Chun, thank you so much for joining us. We understand that the residents in Jinjarum are subjected to plastic burning which releases toxic gases and that the pollution uh, is affecting their water supply can you uh, walk us through the situation how did it get uh, you know out of hand okay. uh, thanks melissa first of all uh, green Peace malaysia has published two reports in 2018 and 2020 so in our report uh, we highlight that the unregulated and now abandoned dump site have been filled with uh, shredded plastic and we collect some sampling so in our sampling results, it shows that contaminated with high concentrations of heavy metal, including cadmium and lead. So then and there's a significant contamination with a hazardous chemical, including the presence of brominated spray retardants, were found off at the site where the plastic waste were burned. And overall, the finding of these investigations have revealed that the shredded plastic is posed at several dump sites in Malaysia, especially in Jinjarum, Klang, Sungai Petani, etc., contains a range of metal and organic chemicals, including persistent organic uh, pollutants, which have likely been contaminating the surrounding environment during their storage or processing activity. And that is also why local communities were complaining about the increased uh, risk of air pollution and water pollution. Uh, Kia Chun, 
We were just speaking to Rajiv Rishikaran, speak, uh, who you know, described to us uh, government policy during the Pakatan Harapan time. And he said that there's a distinction to be made between certain types of waste and what clean, recyclable waste. Mm -hmm. Is that a position that Greenpeace, uh, or a distinction that Greenpeace holds to as well? That there's actually waste that is good enough to import and that can be dealt with in a way that's environmentally safe? First of all, there are two types of issues. The first is the contaminated and illegal plastic waste. And the second one is the legal plastic recycling, uh, the recycle who import the plastic scrap for recycling. And all, at the beginning, the plastic waste was were supposed to be shifted into Malaysia for recycling purpose. But in our investigations, we found that not all the plastic waste are being recycled or end up being recycled properly. And including Malaysian government admitted that smuggling and corruption are uh, also happening. That is, this is a global broken system. We cannot rely on Malaysians uh, to Malaysia government, Malaysia to recycle the plastic alone. It's a global uh, problem that we need to work it together. Okay, all right. If I may come back uh, quickly to um, you know the, the effects of the pollution that we're seeing from the recycling. Uh, what is it that Greenpeace wants to see? What action does Greenpeace uh, want to see taken by major stakeholders and everyone in that ecosystem, uh, from government regulators at the federal, state, and local levels, as well as say the public? Uh, what would you like to see from Greenpeace Malaysia? Okay, from the result and complaint that we have received, what we can see is Malaysia has issues with capacity deal with all this huge amount of waste, especially the contaminated waste that is hardly to be recycled. The example of health and environmental pollution in Malaysia taught us as a lesson or even a wake-up call on the possible effect of unregulated plastic waste could have on the community when gone unchecked. Therefore, the government should review and strengthen its policy on this uh, waste report and this uh, waste import. So our final message is, if Malaysia does not have strict regulation and strengthened uh, monitoring to plug these loopholes, we will still face the problem of uh, waste sampling. Our uh, conclusion is, recycling is good. We should continue to recycle. But recycling alone cannot fix our global plastic pollution fast enough. As of now, the world has recycled just 14% uh, of plastic packaging is used. Recycling rate will not be fully really achieved without designing the new way to break down and reuse of the plastic packaging that isn't recycled because the material is contaminated or too small for easy uh, collection, which has also low economic value or contain multiple materials that cannot be separated. For example, think of candy wrapper, the takeout container, single serving coffee. rely on recycling to solve this global problem. That is also uh, why developed countries should stop putting their responsibility on other countries for their own plastic problem and put in place to reduce single-use plastic. Again, this is a problem of overconsumption. The solution should be focused on reduction of non-essential plastic. We are calling governments and companies to set clear reductions on uh, single-use plastic and invest in redesigning better delivery alternatives such as refill and reuse systems. Okay, uh, if I may come back very quickly to the recycling and I'm wondering because Rajiv talked a bit about the ecosystem and that there's a business proposition, there's an economic uh, uh, imperative for keeping this industry alive. How would Greenpeace encourage the public to think about that and encourage policymakers to think about that? I mean, there is a cost I mean, to recycle because what we can see right now is uh, some developed countries are taking advantage by exporting their waste to other developing countries who does not have the capacity to, do, to deal with all this huge amount of plastic waste. Plastic waste uh, recycling is good, but we cannot just rely, rely on Southeast Asian countries, especially Malaysia as a uh, de developing country, to do the recycling work alone. So the government should show their political willingness to tackle the pollution, waste pollution at the source. Can I ask you, do you think there's enough public awareness on this matter? Do you think that the public is aware of what happens when uh, plastic is used and plastic is recycled? I remember that I think since two, two years ago, like many media keep saying that Malaysia is a Song Samba Junior, Malaysia is a world stumping ground. This one is a wake-up call, a wake-up call to remind everyone of us to take care of our environment. I mean, we can have a good quality of life without producing all this huge amount of single-use plastic waste. 
So it's time for us to reflect our, I mean, lifestyle without generating so much of single-use plastic. At the same time, also tackle the problem at the source, which is also demanding the rich countries, the developed countries, to not to export their plastic waste to developing, to developing countries like Malaysia. All right. Thank you, Kiachun, for speaking with us. We appreciate your time. Now, we're going to take a quick break here on Consider This, but after this, we're going to take a closer look at the ways in which plastic waste imports um, and the recycling industry are tied up in webs of corruption and mismanagement. All that after this. Stay tuned to Consider This. wilayah Selkom kami bersama Malik kepada sekolah yang membuat polisi kalau itu yang dikehendaki fine mungkin kita berbeza pandangan tapi kita mempunyai kuasa yang boleh menentukan budaya di masa hadapan polisi yang mesra wanita sudah tentu dia akan datang daripada pemimpin wanita Ini berwajah baru. Ini pula susulan khas pesawat back air di Kazakhstan. Pesawat berkenaan dilaporkan tergelincir dua kali. Notifikasi berita terkini dan navigasi mudah. Podcast dikemas kini dengan berita dan program. Riba, reformasi, resistance and hope. Serta video tanpa hard dengan scroll tanpa henti. Buat turun aplikasi baru Astro Awani sekarang. Semua yang terjadi adalah berita Tetapi tiada siapa yang boleh bawakan yang terkini Dan tergempar seperti kami Dilihat hanya memberi wang tanpa matlamat yang tepat Dia tidak melakukan apa-apa kesalahan Untuk mendapatkan jawapan yang bermakna Kita perlu soalan yang tepat Amat sedih dengan apa yang berlaku di atas Tiada ruang untuk berita palsu Negara kita telah merekodkan kes harian baru sebanyak Hanya fakta yang diberikan Amat penting untuk meneruskan perjuangan negara melawan pandemik ini Sentiasa memastikan suara anda, suara rakyat didengari Kenapa? Membawakan apa yang penting di mana sahaja anda berada Kerana kita nak putuskan Thanks so much for staying with Sharad and I on Consider This. Let's continue our conversation about the government's decision to allow clean plastic waste imports. Now, from January to November 2018, Malaysia was the world's top destination for plastic waste exports, uh, importing more than 750,000 tons of plastic waste. This influx had purport, reportedly led to a sharp rise in illegal recycling facilities and illegal dump sites causing land, water and air pollution. Now, the Centre to Combat Corruption and Cronism, or better known as C4, looked into this issue and recently released the results of their research. A researcher at C4, Wong Pui, joins us on the line now. Pui, good evening. Your report, titled Malaysia is not a garbage dump, it examines what you describe as the value chains of the import, transport and processing of plastic waste in Malaysia. Now, uh, and that these value chains reveal uh, levels of corruption and weak regulation and lax enforcement as well as complacency resulting in significant environmental damage. Now, um, can you give us a bit of a summary of your findings, findings to begin the conversation? Uh, okay, so my, chap my, my report, my full report is 100 pages. I know, it's a big one. <laughs> of 30 pages, so a summary is going to be difficult, but I'll try. <laughs> Basically, I um, trace the value chain, um, where it touches the ground in Malaysia, from the ports until the factories. And I realized that there are so many avenues for corruption uh, and, and, and um, poor enforcement. So C4 is an organization that works on anti-corruption and also we promote good governance practices. Um, so we found that, uh, as you can see in the title of my report, we found that there was a lot of criminal activity going on, 
there was environmental crime in the sense that the crime leads to environmental uh, destruction. There was also a lot of intimidation against activists. And how can how does crime happen? Crime happens uh, one would be complacency or lack of enforcement, lack of uh, sufficient regulations, good law, weaknesses in the law, uh, and it also can happen because of corruption. So as you can see, the title I summarized everything for everyone, <laughs> and, and everything is connected. So where climate change comes in uh, would be where Greenpeace report. Uh, is more relevant because they look at environmental impacts of the waste mm. and also on human health. So we can see very clearly that from corruption and from complacency, it will lead to crime and climate change. So what do we want to do about it? So my report captures citizens against these um, four elements, uh, these two elements, sorry, crime and corruption. Uh, I. In summary, um, my report can be captured by uh, Voltaire, the French philosopher. He said, history is nothing more than a tableau of crimes and its fortunes. Um, the people in my report, the community groups whom I spoke to, the civil servants, and uh, to um, a certain extent the, the plastic businesses as well, have shown us that history is also a tableau of fighting crimes and overcoming misfortunes. So a lot of work has been done to, to try to solve this problem, and right. that's what I captured in my report. Right, Pui. I mean, in terms of actually addressing the issue, because uh, we had, early in the show, we had Rajiv Ishikari who worked with the former uh, environment minister uh, to, to think about policies that might start to shift the, the parameters, or shift the, the ground in terms of the existence of this ecosystem of both legal and illegal factories, importation, you know, uh, legal importation, as well as smuggling. How can policy begin to, in your mind, start to shift the way in which this whole industry is structured in Malaysia? Um, the way the industry is structured in Malaysia was not a problem. I have to say that before, so China's ban have uh, took effect in 2018 and that's when the huge volumes of plastic waste came into Malaysia. Before that we were already importing plastic waste and and the problem wasn't so big because um, the volumes were low, the, the factories were small, relatively smaller, they are, the, the waste that's coming in was manageable. Mm. Okay, we can... What was a problem right. is the international smuggling syndicates involved in waste trade, not just plastic waste, hazardous waste. Um, there are Interpol reports about the criminal activity in the waste trade, plastic waste trade. There's Interpol reports on uh, dumping, dumping of hazardous waste, plastic waste, anything in the ocean. So it, it's a criminal syndicate. China banned the import of all these waste because they didn't want to deal with all this pollution, all this smuggling anymore right. because it was so difficult to control. Okay, Pui, if I may, so if I may interject here very quickly, I wanted to ask you, I mean, so you've got this report that's come out a couple of weeks ago and I'm sure um, people have had time to digest it. What is it that C4 wants, um, wants to see happen? What action would you like uh, you know, federal, state and local governments to take, as well as the public to take, when, uh, uh, in, in responding to the gaps and weaknesses that you've identified in your report? So my report uh, doesn't only focus on plastic waste. Uh, one chapter is uh, uh, expands a little bit on the problems of uh, governance when it comes to industry, industrial development. There's a lot of problems with the sitting of our industries, the approval of manufacturing licenses. Um, there's a lot of uh, unknown happenings going on. You can see my report to find out what, uh, what happened. So we really need to ramp up our enforcement efforts, our investigative efforts. We need to ramp up our anti-corruption efforts. So the National Anti-Corruption Plan that was introduced by the former federal government, which the current federal government said that they will continue to uphold, is very important because they talk about whistleblower protection, freedom of information. All these are procedural um, um, procedures that are very important to fighting corruption. So in my report, I outline how uh, complex 
governance is number one, that there's corruption and it's so difficult to catch across all agencies, local government, state government, federal government. Number two, governance is very complicated because we have so many agencies and every agency has their own uh, Bidang Kwasa, Puncha Kwasa, they have their own okay, Pui, uh, jurisdiction. Uh, yeah, Pui, like, okay, very quickly. If okay. China decided that it could not deal with uh, this whole plethora of problems that you just outlined, and in Malaysia we know governance is weak, what would you, if you were in, uh, in charge of government, do? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be better to take the Chinese solution, which is to ban this... Uh, trade outright in order to kind of solve the problem? Okay, so I released a report and I also released a policy brief. And the policy brief summarizes our recommendations that yes, I would say we need to institute a ban, but we cannot throw our recyclers in, into the deep end of the pool. We cannot do it immediately. I really believe that every country needs to deal with their own waste because it's a question of environmental justice. The developed countries are dumping in developing countries, and we are enabling it. Okay. It's very difficult to catch all elements, all, all criminality in in a waste trade. Okay. So. To make sure that every country deals with its own waste. Thank you so yeah, much, Puyi, it's not for an economic uh, sector. It's 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 a total injustice. Okay, all right. Thank you, Puyi, for joining us on the show tonight. We really do appreciate it, and thank you for sharing your report with us. That's all we have for you on this episode of Consider This. But before we leave you tonight, just a quick reminder, don't forget to get all the latest news and information on COVID-19 vaccines at astroawani.com and on the Astro Awani app. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin, signing off for the evening. We'll be back with you on Monday, same time next week. Till then, good night. <laughs>